I care for you. Thanks. <laughs> 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 I care for you as you care for me. Yeah. Love this page. Again, the second Buja page, the second page representing the spirit of country, a full page spread. Um, such a rich, rich, rich page. So alive and electric. I remember we, the um, little gala there is very significant <laughs> in yeah. this page. Yeah. Um, yeah. I spent um, the whole summer working on growing these sunflowers. And sunflowers, they're so beautiful. They're majestic. And I had also been watching on Instagram of like making sunflower steaks, like grilled on the Barbie, right? You know, the barbecue. What? Um, yeah. I don't know. It was something. What is that? Steaks? Well, like you just, yeah, you take the head of the sunflower, you clean off all the petals, and then like all the seeds are in there. But it has this like meaty layer between. Like, chuck it on the Barbie? And chuck it on the Barbie. Can and roast that it. shit? Yeah. Yeah. Vegans. Well, I don't know. I was very curious to try it. So I spent Did you try it? All Sorry, I'm going to stick on this for a second. No, I didn't because the oh. galah ate it. Oh, You, made, you ruined done. my punchline. Sorry, Jeez. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. so yeah, so um, so I spent all summer growing these sunflowers from seed, right? So they get like this big, and then they get this big, mm. and then you got to get a stake to make sure they get this big, and then put them in the right sun spot. Like I, I loved these. Like I worked on them. Anyway, and they've they've grown. They got these beautiful big flower heads. I'm like, oh great, it's almost time to make my sunflower stake. Then one morning, Sunny starts barking. So I go out the back. Sunny is Emma's dog. Sunny is my dog. And I go out the back and I look up on the porch and there's like three galahs going at my sunflowers. Like they are having a feast, right? And they're just rah, 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 chomping and biting it, standing on it. Um, and I went up there and I was initially like, oh, what the hell, man? Like, ah. But then I took a pause and I was like, all right, Emma, they live here too, right? These galahs live here. <laughs> this is their home. <laughs> I am so, I guess I should be thankful that I was able to provide such a good meal for them, yeah. right? And like, great, Did, that, I guess. Is that a real, is that a real thought? Yeah, how do you I, pick it, it up? It was like, oh, fuck them? you fucks for like maybe two, like two minutes. And then I was like, you know what? I live here. I have food. They don't maybe have enough food. I'm glad I could provide them some food. So anyway, That's so. That's so humble. Well, I don't well know. done. Yeah. And then Emma took a photo of it. Oh, I did because it was hilarious. Yeah. It was just, well, yeah. And so we were sitting down to draw, work on this page. Mm. And then I started randomly telling you this story. Yeah. And something you're so good at is intuiting, like, um, when is a moment to grab? And you were like, yeah. hold on a second, send me that photo. And you start to sketch it out and you start to just do the whimsy drawing of it. And and because I w felt called to tell that story while we were talking about this page, you thought that that was significant. Yeah. And yeah. so here it is forever. 100%. And this is a, this is where we balanced it from the almost like the natural life of, of, of life, right? So it grows and then it is consumed by life, mm. which is then, of course, reflected with the gentleman figure behind that is... Uh, um, nurturing the the, yeah. the growth of the others, you know? Yeah, because it's, you know, I care for you as you care for me. Like, um, I felt in that sense, like, I was caring for that galah because yeah. I was providing a yeah. good meal, yeah. you know? And just like he, this gentleman is watering or this person is watering, you know, and, and providing care back to Buddha. Yeah. Mm. The cyclical nature of nature. Mm. Mm. And also just we know that this is like the part two of the first, um, the first... So this is the hero image, these mm -hmm. four panels together. Um, what I also love is the difference of the tree from the first one, where it's like um, just coming into life and new leaves, whereas this side of the tree... Dead. Yeah. Or or um, in hibernation, you know, in that autumn, fall yeah. sort of tone. There's a season to it. A little plot twist. A little, little Easter egg there. You can see those butterflies in the top left mm -hmm. there. Of course, the same butterflies of the uh, Who's Your Mob page. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Now, love this it. man is also very symbolic in this as well because this is a reference to s the masculine and the feminine, the feminine being the Buddha and the mother that we're talking about, that, that which gives birth to the people and the life. But in this case, there's the external, the masculine, which, which, is, which role is to seed that. Mm. which grows as well, and to maintain that external and within mm. Buja country. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember my – I remember we talked a lot about this, um, and I'm so thankful that 
you held your position so strongly because I, I, it's so strong having that masculine represented there. I think I was advocating for a female or a less masculine figure. Like I was probably arguing for like a non-binary just person of personhood. And you're like, no, the yeah. masculine's important because exactly what you just said, yeah. that seating, that care, yeah. the role between the masculine and the feminine. Like, it's very intentional. Yeah. It's very intentional. Um, and that's what we wanted to reflect in the end anyway. So, One thing I observe is that like this page is a good example because it's about two thirds of the way through the book. And like what I loved watching you draw this was we, we'd sketched out all the post-its and all the concepts, right? But the more you immersed in it, the more layers you brought to it. Um, and this is such a good example. Like you were immersed deeply in these concepts and then you're like, no, nah, it has to be masculine because da 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 da. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. All right, Reese. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it was, um, yeah. It was very cool. I do get consumed with detail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you, things reveal themselves. So it's like we wouldn't, we don't plan on going like, this is what the page looks like and why. We have a very general concept to these things. So we'll go like, oh, I care for you if you care for me. We go, cool, that's that's a great statement. And then we'll go, now what does that look like? And then we sort of do that. But as – and it's like, okay, we've got the we've got the land and we've got the trees and we've got the sky or whatever. But it's like in that moment, that's when you, in a different conversation, showed me the picture of mm. the gala. And I'm like, isn't that interesting that now that comes to, to me in this moment because that can make sense in this moment. And then the same with him is that – that was never going to be there either. It mm. was just as this was being created, that's what comes to me at the time, which makes sense to the, the broader visual mm. narrative that mm. we're conveying. Would you define that process as like emergent, organic, you know, spoken through uh, is how we describe it, but how would you describe that process? What do you call that? In intuition? What do artists have when they don't have to think about it and it comes to them? What's the word? Intuition? Yeah, intuitive. It's an intuition. I don't think about it. Yeah. Or I'll try it and then I go, oh, it's usually afterwards where I go, oh, that makes sense. Mm. Oh, yeah. When I see it, I'm like, excuse me, I have 10 hundred questions about this. And you're like, yeah. okay, I've never thought about <laughs> it before. Let me, let's talk about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just drew it, mate. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, that's why it is. Um, it's lovely co-authoring a book like this because neither of us gets caught in the echo chamber. Yeah. Because, you know, you do no. a page and then you bring it to me. Then we talk about it for about two hours. Then, you know, <laughs> <laughs> revisions. Yeah. Yeah. The Evolution. Yeah. Speaking of brilliant pages that you intuited, <gasps> take a breath. I'll give you the present. <sighs> breath is so damn important. Literally. People forget to breathe. Mm. That's what you say all the time. Oh, totally. And it's like the breath is such a good indication of where you are. Like it, it's like a physiological trigger for where your energy is at. Like yeah. if you're fearful or anxious, it's quite shallow. Or if you're excited, very similar physiological response. Whereas then if you're more peaceful or if you need to create peace in a moment of stress, harnessing the breath to create yeah. more peace, absolutely. I didn't know how big the lungs were. Yeah. I think until we went to Mana and then they were explaining it. Yeah. How massive they are. They're like yeah. You think of them like as if they're just sort of like these two little things here. Yeah. But they go all the way up to here and you can hold so much in your lungs, mm. you know, so much. And like people can, people can be pierced here, for example, and their lung can collapse. And it doesn't make sense because it's more like shoulder, but yeah, it's such a, it's such a large organism. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And we only use like a third of it. Like many people underutilize their lung capacity. Yeah. Um, I did um, some like uh, like yoga and breath stuff when I was at uni and we did these things called Sudarshan Kriyas, which is like breathing exercises. But like we would breathe with our hands here, our hands here, and then our hands here. Oh, yeah. And like breathing, doing the deep breath work with my hands here activates like the top part of your lungs, whereas this activates like the middle section and this activates like the lower section of the lungs. Yeah. Just through how like the arms force your breath to move into the lungs differently. I don't uh, know exactly. But it, it's amazing how when you do something like that and you feel the full capacity of your lung. Oh. There's also such a crazy difference between nasal breathing and mouth breathing. Mm. And I remember listening to this podcast on Joe where this bloke, he comes in, he was a breath expert. And he was explaining that like chemically, like when, when oxygen goes through your nose and it goes into this pocket in your sinuses, your the filter that's going through into your lungs, then there's a it, there's a different chemical that is produced in your lungs mm. through the nasal cavity as opposed to the mouth. 
you know so mm. and it's stronger i think um like in yoga we have the ujjayi breath which is in All through the names. nose i know yeah this is what was the other one? ujjayi and what was the one you said the sudarshan kriya yeah okay yeah I'm gonna two different practices oh maybe they're both from india i'm not sure yeah yeah. So what's this one you're talking about? Uh, the Ujjayi breath, which is the, um, this. it has like a sound like an ocean. So it's... <sighs> like it's a slight constriction at the back of the throat, but only through the nose and out through the nose. Yeah. And it's um, like when I'm doing a, like a hot yoga class and like my whole body is like, it's 40 degrees, you're moving. This is horrible. It's shock. But this, <laughs> that like, it, it's amazing how much power that breath can yeah. give you in those moments of stress. Yeah. Wim Hof. Yeah. Master. Master of breath. Love this. He talks about, if you know who Wim Hof is, this bloke, he's a European bloke. He's like 70, 80 years old, old boy. But like, Everything he does is within with, is with breath, and it's it's known as the as the Ice Man, right? So he goes into the frozen lakes and he does things that no human can do. And I love him because what he does is he he explains this to science. Like he gets hooked up to the nodes. He's like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not a superhuman man. Like I'm just utilizing my breath well. And he go, he goes you go do all these courses with Wim Hof methods mm. and all this kind of thing, and you, you, you're in this frozen environment, and he's just breathing. He's mm. just breathing, breathing, breath, breath, breath. He's like everything I relate to, the power that I've got, the, is is what you already have at your fingertips, or in mm. this case, in your lungs, right? Mm. How to utilize your breath well? Mm. Yeah, a mutual friend of ours, Mike House. Um, I did a ice bath with him, and yeah. he was saying, yeah, harness your breath, but particularly the exhale is where, like, if you can control the exhale that's where then you find the power like to slow down and to gain control of your breath in that moment of stress yeah. um the other one i use is the box breath which is um i think a navy seals or like whoever the big military super intense dudes are but it's <laughs> four in hold four four out four hold oh, yeah. so inhale oh. two three four hold two three four exhale two three four hold two three what four. is this doing um it's just it's just it's the box breath so it's like Regulating. in times of like you know you're diffusing a bomb you're being attacked like fucking hecticness is happening 